On June 30th, 1908, at precisely 7.14 in the morning, something fell from the sky over the remote wilderness of Siberia. What happened in those few seconds would release more energy than a thousand atomic bombs, and yet for nearly 20 years, the world remained largely unaware. The Podkamenaya Tunguska River region, one of the most isolated places on Earth, home to scattered villages of Evenki people, reindeer herders who had lived in harmony with this unforgiving landscape for generations. Witnesses who survived would later describe what they saw. A second sun blazing across the morning sky. Some said it was as bright as the sun itself. Others spoke of a pillar of fire. S.B. Semenov was sitting on his porch 40 kilometers from the epicenter. He described what happened next. Suddenly, in the north sky, the sky was splitting too, and high above the forest, the whole northern part of the sky appeared covered with fire. I felt great heat, as if my shirt had caught fire. I wanted to pull off my shirt and throw it away, but at that moment there was a bang in the sky and a mighty crash. I was thrown 20 feet from the porch. At an altitude between 5 and 10 kilometers above the Earth's surface, something exploded with a force that would later be estimated at 15 megatons, 1,000 times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. The shockwave traveled outward at supersonic speed. 80 million trees, 2,150 square kilometers of forest, flattened in seconds. But there was something unusual about the devastation. At the very center of the blast, trees remained standing, stripped of their branches, stripped of their bark, like telephone poles planted in the earth. They had been directly beneath the explosion, where the force traveled straight down, too vertical to knock them over, but powerful enough to incinerate everything else. The fireball was visible over a thousand kilometers away. Seismic stations across Europe and Asia recorded the shockwave. For several nights afterward, the skies over London and other European cities glowed so bright that people could read newspapers at midnight without artificial light. Something extraordinary had happened. But in the chaos of Tsarist Russia, in the remoteness of Siberia, no one came to investigate. The Tunguska event occurred during a turbulent time. Russia was recovering from the 1905 revolution. World War I loomed on the horizon. The explosion in Siberia, though witnessed by dozens, remained a local curiosity, a strange story told by reindeer herders and isolated villagers. Research examining over 700 eyewitness accounts would later reveal a sobering truth. At least 30 people were inside or near the tree fall area when the explosion occurred. Many lost consciousness from the shockwave, at least three never woke up, but their deaths went unrecorded, their stories untold. The remoteness that had spared the world a greater catastrophe now ensured that the event would remain forgotten. For 19 years, the fallen forest lay undisturbed. Nature began its slow work of reclamation and the world moved on. Unaware that one of the most significant cosmic impact events in human history had just occurred. His name was Leonid Kulik, a Russian mineralogist with an obsession. He had heard the stories, whispers of a great explosion, a fall of fire from the sky reports that reached St. Petersburg 
spoke of a possible meteorite impact. In 1927, Kulik assembled an expedition. The journey would take them through some of the most inhospitable terrain on Earth, rivers that froze solid in winter, forests so dense that progress was measured in meters per day, swarms of mosquitoes in summer that could drive men to madness. When Kulik finally reached the site, what he found defied explanation. Trees flattened in a perfect radial pattern, extending beyond the horizon. An area larger than London, devastated by a single explosion. But something was wrong, something that would perplex scientists for decades. There was no crater, no impact site, no fragments of meteorites scattered across the landscape. Whatever had caused this devastation had never touched the ground. Kulik returned again, and again, multiple expeditions over the following years. He interviewed witnesses, he mapped the destruction, he searched desperately for any physical evidence of what had fallen from the sky. He found none. The Tunguska event had claimed its victims and left its mark on the land, but it had vanished without leaving the evidence scientists needed to understand it. In the decades that followed, theories multiplied, each attempting to explain the impossible. An explosion without an impact, a catastrophe without debris. The leading explanation emerged from our understanding of atmospheric physics. An asteroid, estimated between 50 and 90 meters in diameter, traveling at least 11 kilometers per second. As it plunged into Earth's atmosphere, Friction heated its surface to thousands of degrees, the intense heat, the building pressure. At some point between 5 and 10 kilometers above the Siberian forest, the asteroid's structure failed. It didn't impact, it disintegrated. All of its kinetic energy, all of the momentum of its cosmic journey, released in a single catastrophic instant. An air burst, the blast wave traveled downward and outward at supersonic speeds. The thermal radiation ignited fires across hundreds of square kilometers. The ground shook. The sky burned. In 1930, British astronomer F. J. W. Whipple proposed that the object wasn't an asteroid at all, but a comet. A fragment of Comet Enki, composed primarily of ice and dust. Such an object would vaporize almost completely upon atmospheric entry, explaining the absence of fragments. The glowing skies observed across Europe for nights after the explosion could support this theory. Ice crystals and dust suspended in the upper atmosphere, reflecting sunlight even after sunset. And then there were the other theories, the ones that stretched credibility, antimatter, a miniature black hole. Some even suggested an alien spacecraft. Science demands evidence, and the evidence points to something far more terrifying than fiction. The universe is filled with objects like the one that exploded over Tunguska, asteroids, comets, debris from the formation of our solar system. Most will never threaten Earth, but some will. Today, astronomers scan the skies constantly. They catalog every near-Earth object they can find. They calculate trajectories. They assess threats. June 30th is now International Asteroid Day, a commemoration of the Tunguska explosion. A reminder that what happened over Siberia in 1908 can happen again. Imagine the Tunguska explosion occurring over New York, London, Tokyo. The casualties wouldn't number in the single digits. They would number in the millions. The remoteness that made Tunguska a footnote in history may have saved civilization from catastrophe. A few hours difference in Earth's rotation and the explosion could have occurred over St. Petersburg or Berlin.
or any of the world's great cities. The forest at Tunguska has largely recovered. New growth covers the scars. The trees that fell are rotting, returning to the soil. In another century, you might never know anything happened there at all. But beneath the new growth, the pattern remains. A ghost of that morning in 1908. A reminder, written in the topology of fallen timber and scorched earth. We are fortunate that Tunguska occurred where and when it did. Remote, sparsely populated. But fortune is not a defense strategy. The next time, we may not be so fortunate. Somewhere in the darkness of space, another object is traveling. It may take decades to arrive. It may take centuries, but it is coming. And when it does, the question won't be if we see it. The question will be whether we're ready.